Yes. <laughs> oh my god. So NFL week four, we can talk about it. Fine, let's go. All right, so it's in the books. So we're gonna do a quick review of week four. But let's start off with this. Several teams are having disappointing seasons, and we're gonna play the what's wrong game. So we're gonna give you a team, and we're also gonna give you our opinion on what we think is wrong with them. You ready? Yep. All right, let's start with my my Cinderella's from last year, Jacksonville Jaguars. What's wrong with them? Three things here. One, all right, especially through the first three games, pre-snap penalties, putting them behind the chains. And then I saw this earlier today, JT, preparing for this question, and it was it, it was kind of crazy. Listen to this, that. The other problem with them is dropped passes, all right? Dropped passes, if I can find – They've lost, listen to this, the Jaguars offense has lost 15 expected points because of drops so far this season. That's the most points lost from drops through three weeks since 2019. So that's another problem. When you're missing out on 15 expected points, especially against the Kansas City type team, that's going to hurt you. So you got pre-snap penalties, drops, and then I think their defensive line. That was the issue last year. They didn't really do anything. Well, in London, the defensive line looked ridiculous. Well, but they won that game, right? But th- I'm saying so far, excluding that game, three out of the four games, their defensive line has been an issue. It was an issue last year, and they didn't resolve it. So I think those three things, not staying ahead of the chains, then you have drop passes, which would have led to 15 expected points, and then the D-line outside of the game in London – that's not a good recipe for a team that can't overcome those things because it's not like they're loaded with talent yet and they're still young. Yeah, I agree with you. I will say this. The issue is not Trevor Lawrence because everything that you said about the receivers and drop passes, I agree with. And I think that's the main issue of why they're struggling is, look, if you keep dropping passes, you can't score points, which means you can't win games. And you definitely can't be dropping passes against Patrick Mahomes, you know, some of these high power matchups they had early on. So I agree. That's the issue. And it's not Trevor, because if you look at all like the major metrics that, you know, all the analysts and like fantasy guys look at Trevor Lawrence is up there. We're talking about like big time throw rate uh, yards per attempt, like all his numbers saying that if these receivers are holding on to the ball, he might be in the MVP race. So I think once the receivers get their act together, I think that's when you're going to see the Jags start to look like the Jags that we saw last year. But I'm not going to I'm not going to blame anybody else. But Calvin Ridley and Zay Jones. Wow. And Christian and your boy Christian Kirk. They got to catch passes, man. They all getting paid a lot of money, man. And they too talented to be doing that. All right, next team. Oh, I know that I know you're gonna love this. Yes. What is wrong with the Bengals? Well, I think the low-hanging fruit, as you like to say, is the borough cat. Why you always say that? You always say that. That, that. that is your but, saying. I don't that, say that. No, you always say that. I, the low-hanging fruit is Burrow's calf injury, right? He's not the same, he's not as mobile, but what a result of that is, or I should say a byproduct of him not being able to do as well, is the offensive line, right? Like they brought in new guys. They thought they had a good a good um, O-line going in. But when you look at the stats through four weeks, the first week against the Browns, granted a good defense, two sacks, 10 QB hits. Hey, that's then better go- than that, that, that uh, playoff game. The, the Tennessee game. Bring- like 10 times. <laughs> Listen, anything's an improvement over that game. But then you look at the Ravens in week two, one sack, five QB hits. But then you look at the last two, two sacks, six QB hits, three sacks, nine QB hits this past Sunday against the Titans. JT, not only is he operating on one leg, but now the O line is not keeping him upright and clean in the pocket. And T Higgins goes down. Well, T Higgins wasn't playing great to begin with, in my opinion, but Again, we've always talked about it with the Bengals. Got to have that O-line, and it's coming back to haunt them here early on. And the thing with the Bengals is I can only blame the O-line so much because we see them go to the Super Bowl with a bad O-line. So they just need a lead average offensive right. line to win a championship. But It's bad. But, cu- but couple that – right, it is bad. You're right. I, I, I see what you're saying. But then couple that with the injury, them being average might not even be good enough. All right, man, look, injuries happen. I get it. I'm not even blaming Burrow for this. I'm not going to blame the players. It's two It's two reasons what's wrong with the Bengals. It's the same. The first one is the same thing that's always been wrong with them. It's the front office. Front office, first of all, you just paid Joe Burrow 
what I could win in the lottery right now, in the, in the, in the money, the money ball uh, jackpot, right? You paid him. You play the Mega Millions for tonight. Hey, don't worry about that. You play. You paid him two hundred and fifty million dollars, right? The man is hurt. Why are you not protecting your investment? They should have arrested him, and you know you should have arrested him. Your players are telling you, look, <laughs> if if you could keep him out until week five, until he's healthy, we'll be fine. And then what did they do? The owner came down on his little cart, drove around in a circle on the practice field. I know he told him in that conversation. He's like, get your ass out there and play and earn this money. And Joe was like, all right, I got to strap it up. So <laughs> the fact that he is playing while he is clearly not right, that is on the front office. And this is the Bengals front office. We talked about this, I think it was two years ago when Carson Palmer came out and said, hey, bro, you know, beware of this front office. Like they don't do things the right way when it comes to what's in the best interest of the players. And this is clearly what's going on. And then the other thing is, look, you said this either last year or the year before, and you kind of went away from it. I think they went to the Super Bowl, and you kind of backed off this a little bit. And I'm, I'm, back I'm digging the old shit. I didn't, Zach I didn't back, I didn't back off. Zach Taylor, Taylor, terrible coach, terrible coach. And I think this year with the hobble, Burrow is showing you just how bad he is. Like, we thought his coaching was questionable before, but I think – it's downright bad right now. Like his players and talent have overcome his coaching deficiencies in the past. And they can't do it this year. Like you look at, just look at something simple. So the average depth of target for Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, since they've been in the league on this team, it has declined every year. So for reference, Joe Burrow's average depth of target that he's throwing has gone from 8.9 his first year. It's 7.1 now. And I know people are going to be like, Oh, he's hurt. It was seven last year, so it's still going down. Chase, average depth of target. First year, 12.9. It's down to 8.5. So what this means is Zach Taylor's offense isn't producing explosive plays. Like, I, that's that's the play calling. You look at other things. Like, they don't use Joe Mixon. They got a bad old line. They don't scheme around their bad old line deficiencies. Like, I don't think Zach Taylor's a good coach, and I think the Bengals need to get rid of him before they lose their investment in Joe Burrow. But that's what I think is wrong. Well, Front I office. will – is Zach Taylor. I mean, that was a really long-winded answer. Good job. But what I would say is, to your point about the distance, the average depth of the of the pass game is, I think they're trying to hide the offensive line and have Burrow get it out quicker, which you saw that's what happened with Ben Roethlisberger when they went from Bruce Arians to Todd Haley. You mean those, those Bruce Arians years where he was getting murdered? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's what Cincinnati was trying to avoid by going still, to the show. So I, I don't I, blame I, him I as that. much. I, I get, get it. That, but I but I feel like, look, you got Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. Like, your average depth of target can't fall that off can't, that much. Because fall, right. It can't fall off it. that much. That 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 is more than regressing toward the mean. That just means, like, y'all not doing anything. Like, everybody's checked down. Like, that's basically what it means. <laughs> All right, next one. Check this down is Joey. Great. No, go ahead. Check down Joey. I don't want that. Hey, he's not good for fantasy. <laughs> hey, all right, I Patriots. don't got him. It's okay. Check it down all you want. <laughs> Patriots, what's wrong with him? Oh, where do you start? I think it's simply the talent and personnel, JT. Belichick, probably the greatest coach, greatest football coach of all time, maybe in any sport of all time because it's so difficult to win in football and how often he's won and for how long he's won. But I think him being the GM, and, and that's part of the problem, is he's kind of the player personnel guy too. The talent and personnel are not there. And you go back to some of his coaching decisions, and I know you've harped on it. You can't have the special teams and the defensive coordinator oh, from oh, you, five you, years you, ago. Last year, last year when I said <laughs> that this was an issue and everybody was like, oh, JT's overreacting. You, you, you can't have – you can't Proceed have, to have one of the worst offenses you ever seen you, last year. You can't have – Non-offensive guys calling the plays. Can, can I finish? You can't have Joe Judge and Matt Patricia running the offense at the same time and then have no offensive coaches in there. But it also comes down to the talent. Person. But it's also the talent and personnel because now they do have Bill O'Brien in there. And I think we we both agree, you know, he may not be the best head coach for, in the NFL, Bill, Bill O'Brien, but he's, but he's a really good offensive coordinator. I'd rather have league. Bill O'Brien than Matt Nagy. So that lets you know where he stands on the so, scale of but, So of not production. even, right. So not even Bill O'Brien is able to get any production out of this offense. And it's not just on Mac Jones. It's the offensive talent in general. I think that's truly what's wrong with them because if they had explosive wide receivers, if they had more of an explosive running back, 
if they had those tight ends from back in the day, I think Bill O'Brien would be fine. But I, I've got to go talent and personnel, but that falls on Bill Belichick, not the coach, but the player personnel guy. I agree with you on the the talent level. I mean, let's be honest. They got Juju Smith-Schuster out there getting, like, hella snaps. So that was that lets you know the talent on the team. And they're like, he's not even he's not even the best guy we got. I'm like, well, who else is on the team? But so, <laughs> And they signed Zeke. So that lets you know where they are. And I don't think their offense is innovative at all. Is it a little bit better with Bill O'Brien? Numbers don't say it is, but I'm pretty sure if they had more talent, it would look better than the offense did last year. Let's keep it a buck, man. What's wrong with him is Mac Jones ain't a franchise quarterback. And you saw it last year with the whole Bailey Zappi situation. It's like, is he better than Mac or not? And then Mac's got this whole whole drama. You know, do they like him in New England? And I think you're starting to see he's not he's not the guy. And I think. Those issues compound with not having a, a, a really good quarterback. That's what's wrong with the Patriots. Because their defense is still good. Your, your guy who you picked as defensive rookie of the year, Christian Gonzalez, he's been balling this year. Like, Judon been balling this year. That defense has looked good. It's just the quarterback can't do nothing. But let me ask you this. If Kirk Cousins me. or Jordan Love was on this team, would it be oh, I, any I better? I think they could win. It wouldn't See, be, I, I, don't, I, I think it would be the degree of difficulty would there, still be hard, but I think there would, would not be. Better. But it, there would not be a, a drastic improvement, I think is my would. point. No, there Matt would Jones, not, not, not drastic, not, not drastic him. improvement. Nah. All right. So as we've done in weeks past, we're going to give you a player, a performance, or a storyline from this past week that you are not overreacting to. I'm not, I'm not going to overreact to your Dolphins getting beat bad by the Buffalo Bills because two things. I still think Miami is a really good team. I still believe in Tua, so I think they'll be fine. But two, they lost to the Buffalo Bills, who at this point after this win and some of the other teams losing, like Cleveland and Kansas City, not looking great against the Jets, Buffalo might be the best team in the AFC, along with the Dolphins. So that's why I'm not overreacting. I don't know if anyone is, but I can see where some Dolphin fans are starting to overreact to, oh my goodness, like we're in trouble, so maybe that's more of the not yeah. panicking. It's it's a um, it's a game against one of the best teams in the NFL. It's a divisional rival, and it's on the road. I will say this: I talked about this with Germ. I think the Bills got they got lucky this year with us because they played the Dolphins at home with no snow, and now they get to come play <laughs> us in South Beach when it's not hot. So advantage to the Bills. They should win those two games, but. That was the low hanging fruit, as you say. That not to Whoa, overreact. the low hanger. That was not the low hanging fruit. Don't react to the uh, Dolphins' loss to the Bills. I didn't want to pick that one because I figured you would. I'm gonna go with something that I'm not falling for. It's the Chargers winning two in a row. I ain't over. But the dawn of sports told you this would happen. I ain't over. I don't understand. That. Are you not overreacting to my genius prediction? Is that what you're not overreacting to? That's anyway, fine. I ain't overreacting. Continue. Continue. I ain't overreacting to the Chargers beating the Raiders at home. When they did their best Chargers impersonation right on time, they let a rookie quarterback who hasn't dressed all year drive down the field in crunch time, throw a pick on the goal line, and here's the thing. The Raiders almost got it back to come down and try to win again. So I'm not I'm not buying it. Two two wins in a row. Brandon Staley should be fired. The Chargers are still bad. They're a dumpster fire. They need help. All right, right flip the Just script. Just admit I was right. Just admit I was right. Anyway, give us one player performance or storyline that you are panicking on. It's time to worry about it. Man, it's my Steelers. My Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, that win against Cleveland, great. Even though the offense Looking didn't back, look great. Like, how did that it, happen? It, it had a co- yeah, exactly. That's what you look back on now. And then the Raiders, you're like, all right, well, a win's a win. Even though it was ugly and we almost blew it, a win's a win. But then when you lose 30 to six to a rookie in his fourth start ever against a defense that's supposed to be really good, especially after getting after the quarterback, but then they come back with six points, JT pretty much tells me there's no hope with his offense. Even if Deontay Johnson comes back, even, if, Jer- even, even if Jerome Bettis <laughs> came out of it retirement, don't, it, don't, it don't matter. It doesn't it don't matter. matter. It it's so matter. bad. I, I And I, I feel bad that I can't show this graphic, but basically I sent it to our group chat. I want to say, last week and it was ranking all the teams in the nfl based on passing and rushing efficiency and it's like every other team in the nfl is like in the middle or the top right hand corner and there's one lonely team at the bottom way by themselves 
in the worst tier possible. And it's you guys. It's like, it's epically bad. Like, you guys might have the worst offensive efficiency I've ever seen. And then the Broncos might have the worst DVOA on defense I've ever seen. So <laughs> I, it, we seen some epic things this year. I, I wanted to say that, that, you know, um, I want to panic on the Steelers, but I've been panicking on them because I don't think Canada is good. He should have been brought back. Right. I'll tell you who I am panicking on. And it's a team that I picked to be the next Jacksonville Jaguars, it's the Atlanta Falcons, man. And I feel bad for them because their defense actually looks good. Like they got a defense that can win them games, but now they still don't have a quarterback. Like Desmond Ritter is bad. Like to anybody who woke up that early to watch them play in London, he is bad. Like he should have been benched. I don't want to say this. He should have been benched for Taylor Heineke. You know how Ooh, we feel you about said Taylor it. Heineke. You said you it. know how we feel about Taylor Heineke. Hey, I, 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 I was, I, I was praying that they put Taylor Heineke in the game. Desmond Ritter is not it. Shout out to Kendall. I know that's your boy. You guys are both Bearcats. But look, Ritter, insurance salesman. He ain't it. So I'm panicking on the Falcons. Until they get a quarterback, they can just play like average level play like Give me Baker Mayfield from the Rams last year. And that team could win the division, but they're going to stick with Ritter, so I don't get it.